Hey all Doug Dini in the garage. Today I'm coming to you from inside my XJ. It's another very chilly day here in New Jersey. That's why I got my talking mittens on. And I want to talk about heat soak. Uh, I'm going to do my best to explain heat soak generically, but um, as I'm in an XJ, obviously I'm also going to be talking about heat soak and heating issues specific to uh, the Jeep Cherokee XJ. Now this video is the uh, prequel to uh, a video on how to solve heat soak. So if you are interested in that, hit the card up in the corner. Uh, I have figured out a way to solve heat soak in these Jeeps for $20, maybe a little more depending on what you have lying around the house. What is heat soak? It is when heat from your engine bay soaks into components more than they can handle. This is usually what causes heat soak, is a lack of air in the engine bay. So if you have a real big motor uh, stuffed into a tiny engine bay, you're probably gonna get heat soak. I got a buddy who has a V10 Audi S6, has problems with heat soak because they've stuffed this huge V10 into uh, what was designed for a little V8 or V6 or whatever. I don't know, I'm not an Audi guy. Uh, in the XJ, heat soak comes from uh, an issue of space because when they designed the XJ, they weren't intending on putting the straight four in it. Uh, the big uh, straight four liter uh, straight six engine was not intended to go in this vehicle. This vehicle was going to get and did get for the first two years only the four cylinder two five and the, the AMC V6 2.8, which was a tiny tiny V8, right? That was the biggest motor they envisioned putting in the XJ. Uh, and that is illustrated uh, in the engine bay. Let's take a quick trip outside and I'll, and I'll show you uh, how you can tell that that's clearly uh, a much smaller motor was designed for this engine bay. You can see here, I mean, if you've ever worked in an engine bay, you know that there's usually a lot more room between the rad support and the front of the motor. There's no room there. Uh, around the sides even, there's very little room considering it's a straight engine, and that's illustrated down there at the oil filter. You know most four liters have a straight oil filter that comes right off the block. Uh, that's not the case on the XJ. They had to put that little 90 degree elbow in because it, this engine bay wasn't designed for this motor. It was designed for a little four cylinder and a little V6. So this long straight six um, kind of threw a wrench in their plans. I mean, I'm glad they found a way to make it work. I love the four liter and I love it in a little light vehicle like the XJ, but uh, you can just see there's no room anywhere. So when this engine bay gets hot, even the, even look at like the hood, the hood just sits down like, like right here. You know what I mean? So there's, when there's hot air, and it's a reverse flow head, um, which means the hot uh, exhaust manifold is right down there, right below, you know, when heat rises, the intake manifold and the fuel delivery system. And that's how heat soak manifests in an XJ, all right? You drive around, you get your car up to temperature, you get your Jeep up to temperature on a hot day, and then you turn it off, and all that hot air, ambient engine bay air, rises and it literally soaks into your fuel rail and your uh, injectors. And it vaporizes the fuel in there, uh, it makes it less dense, so when you start your vehicle up, you're getting a sputtering, you're throwing check engine lights for misfires, uh, you can step on the gas, it won't do anything. It might not even want to start. I've heard of XJs that won't start when they get uh, heat soak. Now this one has heat soak, even though it is the very cold days of March, it's because of that thing right there. I put that plow on the front of this and I drive around and it blocks my radiator, all right? So the engine gets a little hotter than it normally would. Not overheating, but like maybe 215 when I'm driving around. Apparently that's hot enough that when I turn it off, that 215 degree air um, that is no longer being taken out by you know the radiator and the cooling fans uh, soaks up and when I go to start it again, it happened uh, numerous times this winter when I was driving around with that plow and I drive around and be up around 215, I turn it off for five minutes, when I turn it back on, it's a problem. That's the thing with heat soak. If you let your car sit overnight, you're not gonna have heat soak uh, because everything has a chance to cool down, uh, that fuel in the rail um, returns to a more normal temperature uh, and you're fine. It's when you get everything up to temperature, turn it off to run into a store, and then you come back out, uh, that's when you have a problem. And again, the symptoms are sputtering, misfire, low, loppy, uneven idle. Um, it's pretty apparent and, and it, you, it's, it seems like you threw a rod or something. The first time it happens, it's horrifying. 
Uh, thankfully, when it happened in this one, uh, I knew what it was because I, I had it in an XJ I had previously. But the first time I had it, I thought my engine ate itself. You know what I mean? Um, there are a lot of different ways that people have thought of to cure heat soak in an XJ. The most common one that I know that people do is they delete that mechanical fan right there, which is a clutch-driven fan off the motor, because it doesn't move a lot of air anyway, and they try to sneak in an electric fan. Now, my problem with that is, obviously that's gonna help if you're overheating, but it doesn't do anything for heat soak because that fan still goes off when you turn your engine off. All right, so deleting this mech fan is probably a good idea. It's robbing some of your horsepower, it doesn't move a lot of air anyway, and those clutches get tired and then they move even less air. So if you can find a Taurus fan or some aftermarket fan that's thin enough to slide in there, absolutely and that's something i may do on this but that's not curing your heat soak another thing they like to do is they cut hood vents hood louvers into their hood definitely looks cool and it probably helps with cooling when you're driving and it might help a little bit with heat soak but now you've got these little like three inch long slits for that hot air you're hoping it's all going to just escape again i don't think it does anything once you stop moving all right so uh, what I've come up with and what I'm going to explain again in that other video, what you need is a way to keep this fan on, all right? Why this fan? Well, this fan is, uh, is right there. It's right on your fuel delivery system. It's right pointing directly at your exhaust manifold, all right? If you can find a way to keep this fan on for a few minutes after you turn off your engine, you're gonna solve your heat soak. That's all there is to it. Uh, you're gonna be able to remove some of that air. It's gonna blow some of that hot air around, maybe help it um, move out of the engine bay. Now I will say that at this point, once you've found a way to keep this fan on, louvers may make sense. All right, now we don't get a ton of 90 degree days here in Jersey, but if we have a couple of those this summer and I find I'm still getting heat soak, I may, uh, I may cut some hood louvers in there, you know, Maybe just one, just like right above cylinder three and four. Because on the Jeep, that's where you get it a lot. Right at cylinder three and four. Now, I've heard of people in other vehicles. I think the Honda S2000 has this issue. Uh, and some um, VWs, they get heat soak uh, just stopping at a stoplight. All right. And um, for whatever reason, maybe exhaust headers, who knows what, uh, is causing so much heat in their engine bay. But just stopping at a stoplight will cause it to overheat things in your engine bay and it could be like i said if you have a turbo maybe you're cooking the oil in your uh, oil lines there maybe it's cooking your fuel delivery system it could be and i think this is the problem vw's have is that it just heats up the intake and everything so much that your intake air is now hotter and it doesn't manifest in like a catastrophic uh failure like it does in the Jeep, it's more of your fuel mileage uh, goes down, your efficiency goes down, your uh, horsepower, the, it just drives, it drives sluggishly because everything is too darn hot. So that's a brief overview of what heat soak is. Uh, if you have any questions, by all means, leave me a comment. If you're wondering if your Jeep has heat soak or something else, uh, leave me a comment. I've worked on a lot of 4.0s, I've solved a lot of problems on them. I might be able to help you. Uh, if you found this video, uh, educational, uh, helpful, maybe even entertaining, and I hope you did. Please hit that like button, share it with a friend, uh, spread the knowledge. Thanks for watching. See you next time.